Hi everyone, I'm Chris and this is a full university course on machine learning. This course gives a basic understanding of machine learning by exploring the math behind the algorithms. The lecture was designed for students with background in science or engineering to provide an understanding of machine learning theory. It is often claimed that machine learning algorithms are like black boxes. They just take some data, somehow learn from it and give back results. But it is really difficult to understand how and why they produce the results. Here, in this course, we will take a look inside the black box. We try to figure out how the machine learning algorithms manipulate the data. We will find out how they produce the results and we will learn how to change the algorithm's behavior in a desired way. So, at first, let us take a look at some of the terms. The term artificial intelligence is currently not clearly defined. This is because we don't really know what intelligence is. In general, when we talk about AI, we mean methods that try to reproduce artificially aspects of human intelligence. Algorithms in the field of AI can provide an output by a fixed implementation of rules. This can be an implementation of an analytical solution or a numerical solver to approximate this solution. For instance, the best move in the game tic-tac-toe can be determined by simple trying every possible option to win the game. In either way, an implementation of such an algorithm outputs always the best move. And such an algorithm imitates a small aspect of human behavior at least in the game. However, such AI algorithms are very limited because of the fixed implementation of the rules. More interesting are algorithms which can learn the rules from data. Such algorithms are called machine learning. So instead of using fixed implemented rules, this approach is much more flexible. In this course, we will take a closer look on how these machine learning algorithms work. A subfield of machine learning is deep learning. The algorithms of deep learning learn the rules from data in a special way. They produce a hierarchical decomposition of the data. For example, consider an image with a face on it. You can decompose the face into its parts, starting from the small parts like eyes, nose and mouth, you can get to the bigger picture by combining them, the face itself. Now let's take a closer look on the different tasks in machine learning. First we have the so-called supervised learning. Basically, the idea is to learn a desired output from data where the output is known. When we have a categorical output, the task is called classification. So, we want to categorize data into classes or groups. The algorithm learns from training data with known classes how to categorize the data. Then, it can also classify new data with unknown classes. A typical example is spam mail detection. From the training data, the algorithm learns which are the key words in typical spam mails. Then, the algorithm can classify a new mail as either spam or not, depending on the key words in the mail. Similar to classification is regression. The difference is that the target output now is a numerical value instead of a categorical. An example for regression 
is an algorithm to estimate real estate prices depending on the house size, its distance to city center and so on. The algorithm is fitted to data with known house prices. Then the algorithm can estimate the house price of an object with an unknown price just by its features, size, distance to city center and so on. A different category of machine learning algorithms is unsupervised learning. Here you don't have a special target variable. An example are clustering methods. A clustering algorithm tries to group data with similar behavior. If you don't know much about your data, this can be a good starting point. You can get an overview of groups and structures inside your data. Another type of algorithm in unsupervised learning is dimensionality reduction. A typical algorithm is for example principal component analysis. The algorithm tries to reduce the number of dimensions in the data. This is especially useful for high dimensional data sets. Thereby the algorithm tries to reduce the number of dimensions but also tries to keep most of the information of the data. Last but not least, the third category of machine learning is reinforcement learning. Here the idea is to imitate how, for example, dogs learn. They typically learn by reward or punishment. The dog wants to maximize his reward or minimize the punishment. In the long run he learns the rules. So it is kind of a supervised learning, but there is no explicit target variable. The learning process is triggered by the implicit reward or punishment. In this course we first want to know how machine learning works. This is done by reconsidering the mathematical theory of the algorithms. Then it is important to extract the basic key concepts from the mathematical theory. This process of abstraction gives you a deeper understanding. We will find out how to manipulate the algorithms to a desired behavior. Finally, you will be able to solve your own problems far from the standard problems in literature. You can be creative and design your own machine learning algorithms. Machine learning algorithms are based on math. You can see some equations in the background. We will tackle them in this course. We will comprehend the mathematical calculations and most important, extract the key concepts. To give you a feeling what I mean by key concepts, here is an example. This example is referred to a very common question. How many neurons do I need for a certain problem? Of course, you will not know the exact number of neurons in advance, but you can get a feeling how the number of neurons is related to the complexity of the problem. In this example, we consider a special type of neural network. For these neural networks, with two neurons, you can approximate functions with three line segments. That means such a function has two edges. You can see examples of such functions on the right side. If you take more neurons, like 10 neurons, you can approximate functions with 11 line segments. So these functions can have 10 edges. These neural networks perform a so-called piecewise linear regression. That means the neural network approximates functions 
with line segments. The number of line segments is determined by the number of neurons. So if you expect your target function to be monotonic, you might not need a lot of neurons. But if you want to approximate an oscillating function like a sine or a cosine, you will need a lot more neurons. So what is the content of the course? In the next lecture, we will consider the regression task of machine learning. We will learn the details about regression considering the linear regression model. This is one of the standard baseline models of machine learning. After that, we will look into classification. We learn how to use logistic regression to perform the classification task. Despite the name logistic regression, this is a baseline model for classification. The first sections consider algorithms like support vector machines, decision trees and of course neural networks. We will learn that neural networks are built on logistic regression and logistic regression is built on linear regression. First section finished. If you like this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe this channel. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thanks again for listening. See you in the next lecture.